This is Impact Asia. The next 24 hours bring a poignant anniversary for the Korean Peninsula, 60 years since the Korean War broke out. After the de facto division that followed World War II, forces from the Communist North invaded the American-backed South. The war was soon internationalized. Eventually, troops from over 20 countries fought in the first major armed conflict of the Cold War. Well, despite causing an estimated 4 million military and civilian casualties, it's often called the Forgotten War, especially when compared to the awareness today about the Vietnam War. But the United States lost as many as 40,000 troops in Korea. South Korea lost an estimated 138,000 soldiers. Around 215,000 North Korean troops died. And also involved was China, which is estimated by the Pentagon as having lost over 400,000 men. Well, we'll have special coverage of the anniversary from Seoul and from Washington on tomorrow's program, which will be exactly 60 years since hostilities broke out. But here in London, the Korean Cultural Center has put together an exhibition of work from 40 Korean artists asking them to interpret the war and its legacy. I've been to see it, and the curator, Stephanie Sungmin Kim, is with me now. Uh, Stephanie, it was an achievement to bring together the, the work of these artists. What was it that you were trying to do? Uh, thank you, Michelle, for the nice compliments. Um, with this exhibition, we wanted to, we hope to bring an awareness about the Korean War, and also um, it, it is a heartfelt thank you from all the Korean people to British Korean War veterans. Because Britain was one of the countries that contributed troops. Correct. It was um, the second largest contingency that was sent to Korea. It was about 50, 58,000. Um, troops. And actually one of the paintings uh, really encapsulates that because one of them is actually the, the flags of the UK and Korea. Tell me a little bit more about, about this work, which is not a painting, it's actually fabric. Yes, actually it, it, was, a, it was a piece of fabric and the two flags were painted um, on the canvas and they were cut together into strips. So the, the cutting of the flags represented the wounds of the Korean War and weaving them together represented the close ties between um, the UK and Korea and also the, the process of healing. Mm. It's interesting also to me that some of the artists are actually people who've done their, their military service mm -hmm, in South Korea. And I think one of them is also has, has put together an image which again is about Britain and Korea. Explain this to me because this, uh, th this, this required me to look at it for quite a long time before I could try and understand sure. it. This, uh, this photographer is actually uh, a man. Um, it's a photograph of himself dressed as an uh, English woman, actually, it's Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the first. The first. And it shows a great affinity by the um, British and the Korean artists about the British culture and history. What, what's he holding in his hand? We he's, can't see it that clearly, but it's he's significant. Holding, yes, he's holding um, a dog tag from his military national service. So. So that's, a, that's a, his own direct connection with, with the conflict. Correct, yes. Now, again, perhaps not surprisingly, quite a few of the paintings reflect the demilitarized zone that the DMZ mm -hmm. in one way or another. For instance, there's a, there's a photograph of the barbed wire that I think lies right along the entire length mm. of the DMZ. Correct. Well, it's a it's very poetic photograph, although it, it portrays a barbed wire, which is horrible. <laughs> And um, it shows how they they look like flowers and nice um, plants, but they that's the harsh reality that Korea is facing. And a lot of uh, the it was done by a photojournalist who's been to the DMZ and portray, portrayed okay. this. The, there's a very different interpretation of the DMZ that comes from another artist, and mm. he's essentially imagined what the landscape would look like through night vision goggles. Correct, so yes. that the whole landscape has this red tone to it. And again, this is someone who's done his military service. Yes, he Korea. was actually he's doing his national service near the DMZ, and through the night goggles, he was able to see a beautiful scenery. So thus. The color comes from the night goggles. However, he mixed that together with kind of traditional Korean paintings. And, you know, um, it's kind of utopian vision of a landscape that doesn't really exist. Okay. But well, Stephanie, thanks so much. I mean, we've only been able to pick out a few of the paintings, but uh, anyone who's able to see the exhibition in London, I'd certainly urge them to do that. Thanks very much for Thank your you time today. Much.